All right. Uh, rather appropriately, uh, I guess this is a um, Ask Dr. Ben After Dark episode <laughs> because of the content. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Let's try. So I'm going to have a busy next two days, and so it's going to be a little gap, and then I'll get back to these. Uh, but please do uh, send in any questions, uh, even if they're not about uh, SARS-CoV-2. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. As if we can talk about anything else. Maybe. <laughs> okay, um, the question that was left over that I didn't even see, I'm so sorry, at the bottom of uh, a longer question is that a couple of people have asked um, about uh, COVID-19 recovery and testicular problems and or sexual dysfunction. And I am not an expert in any of these areas, but I can read papers. And so, uh, yeah, all right, that's my superpower. Let's uh, put on the cape and get to work. Yeah, so... I pulled up a whole bunch of papers. Um, the place where I tend to go is going to be Google Scholar because that's got, I think, everything that's on PubMed and everything that's on BioArchive or MedArchive, although some of that's on PubMed now too, and some of the things that aren't. And so it's just a nice little catch-all. And I know Google are talk talking about getting rid of it, but that would make me very sad. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, first of all... Um, with viruses like Ebola virus, you actually have a lot of cases where the virus will get into the testes and it will persist there often for weeks or months after the person has made a complete recovery. There are even cases where you can get sexually transmitted Ebola. Yeah, how terrible is that? Ugh, yeah. So people have been looking in COVID-19 patients and there are two big studies that I've seen um, uh, browsing through tonight. And I haven't seen any other, at least big ones, but other people may have looked a little bit. Uh, they are both from China, and they are both, let's see, yeah, both, one was uh, as of March, and the other one is, I'm not sure the date, but sometime in 2020. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go figure. Um, they both show that there's no trace. They've looked in people, including people that have died from SARS coronavirus 2 infection and they do not find any trace of the virus actually in the semen. Thank goodness, I guess, yeah. Although, you know, very bad for the family of the person who died and that person, I guess. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, what else? Uh, let's see. So next question I was looking at is, well, okay, what about erectile dysfunction or something? I've looked at that so many different ways and I cannot find a good scientific paper that is covering that except that there is one which um, let's see no not that one that one there you go it calls itself a literature search looking for possible connections between erectile dys dysfunction and COVID and saying that this could be something that happens if you have um, um, SARS coronavirus 2 infection that's causing uh, destruction of some nerve cells and some of the sort of sensory cells in the nose um, and potential uh, at least low level infections in parts of the brain. I think it's looking at that and saying that this is something that could happen. Don't rule it out. But don't rule it out. It's not the same as saying, yeah, this definitely happens. It's, uh, it's just keep your eyes open, keep your mind open, but we have no evidence for this yet. Um, so then I was looking at, okay, so what's this doing to frequency? Um, yeah, of encounters, if you like. And uh, I looked at a study on women, and the study showed that, let's see, it had two findings. This was in Italy, if I remember right. One was that frequency was up um, considerably from the same time six months ago, something like that, that, that period. But the desire to actually get pregnant was way down <laughs> compared to uh, then, which, yeah, fine. You want something to take your mind off the terrible world, but you don't necessarily want to bring a child in at an uncertain time like this. I can see that. But these are, and again, not an expert in this. I just suspect these are going to be things that differ a lot from culture to culture. I don't think you can extrapolate everything um, from this one study. You'd have to have a lot of them, but there's no evidence so far that it's, yeah, it's, 
it's a lot of stress. I think there's a lot of evidence for that. Stress can go with other things. Um, yeah, stress can make everything else harder, <laughs> just everything more, more difficult. And so, yeah, it, it makes sense in a way. There just isn't any evidence that actually suggests that it's happening on a scale or else somebody hasn't done the right test. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, the other one that I looked at was uh, a test um, uh, talking about couples. Um, and uh, once again, in most cases, uh, I think 50% of the couples reported it actually brought them closer together. 4% of the couples resp um, responded it maybe, you know, pushed them a little bit apart, the, the lockdown and all the rest of it. Um, no uh, negative difference in uh, frequency is just, yeah. Um, generally a good thing, but of course not for everybody because everybody's in a different place. And so, yeah, there's, you know, COVID's not a magic, yeah, cure-all any more than it's a magic, uh, you know, destroy-all. It's just a thing that's an extra bit of stress on top of a world that has plenty of stresses in it, but this is the one we're all focused on right now. So there we go. That's the sum of the evidence that I can find. There is like folk evidence out there, but I, I, I usually take a dim view of that uh, unless they can back it up with some kind of statistics and some kind of rigor. I, it's just, it's probably, it's probably not a real thing yet. So um, I think the, um, the watchword here is keep your eyes open. Eventually, there could be evidence. Right now, there is not evidence. Um, there is evidence of like a meme, basically, going around. So much as I would like this to be a um, like a thing that would drive people that are worried about this to put on a mask, it's it's not. I, I can't see any scientific justification for that. So, gotta find another way to get people in a mask, I guess. Oh well. <laughs> Thanks very much. This is Ask Dr. Ben After Dark. <laughs>